Hello, my lively lovelies, and welcome to Alive with Aaliyah. I'm Aaliyah. Recently, I shared with you my setup for raising monarch butterflies, and so today I thought I would go through and show you what the daily maintenance is like, what I do when I come in and check on the monarchs in their various stages, the chrysalids, uh, the caterpillars, the eggs, the cleanup I'm doing, um, the refreshing of the milkweed, all of that. So let's check it out. One of the first things I like to do is check in on the chrysalids and see how they're doing. So let's start with my um, oldest batch. So here they are. There are four here and one of them is darkened and looks like it's going to close at any moment now. So I'm just going to show you. This is the one that's going to close soon. And as you can see, we have one, two, three that will be going later. So I'm gonna keep a really close eye on this dark one. And as you can see, it's looking healthy. Oop. You can see the, the wing pattern. Now I do have several other chrysalids that are not in that enclosure. I am going to have two different enclosures going for my chrysalids so that I can more easily wash and clean the enclosure um, regularly. But um, I do wait about 48 hours for the chrysalids to dry before moving them and that's also really helpful because it keeps them isolated during a very delicate period when we can find out if we have tea fly or tachnid fly. And here we have an example of um, a chrysalis that did have that, and it's really quite disturbing. Um, you can see that there's liquid uh, dripping from the chrysalis. And you can see down below um, basically the larva for the tachnid flies. And I will dispose of these um, so that they cannot continue on. And the way to avoid that is to raise from eggs or to um, only collect first and second instars from the wild. All right, I've cleaned out that um, unfortunate situation with the tachnid fly uh, killing that poor chrysalis. It's um, always very upsetting to lose a chrysalis. That's actually the first one I've lost. Um, and that's the first, my first exposure um, to seeing tachnid fly. And I've learned about that um, online. So it's always really good to do your homework so you know what you're dealing with. So let's move on to something happier. I'm going to consolidate um, two of my chrysalids into one enclosure, so I'll have two enclosures going, but both of these um, have had some, some time to set, and I've already cleaned one uh, enclosure to a degree. Obviously, it still has a chrysalis in it, so I didn't uh, bleach the whole thing. So I think this is the older one, so I'm going to move that into this one, so I'm still gonna need to clean that up. Supplies I'm going to need for this are Q-tips, a pin, scotch tape, some needle nose pliers just in case, and of course water. So I'm going to just start with a, pulling out a couple of Q-tips here. I'm going to spray this, get that wet, getting it out of the way so they don't spray water over everything. And I'm also going to just have a piece of tape ready to go. Let's see. Put that right there. I'm going to try to uh, loosen the pad here that the chrysalis is attached with. It's kind of like spider web. It's a natural sticky webbing. You see the pad up there? 
That's, I'm trying to get that white fuzzy stuff that you can barely see. It's, of course, the same color as the mesh. And so I don't know if you can see that. It's holding on there. So I'm going to just kind of squish together that fuzz. I'm gently holding it. I'm holding the fuzz. I'm not even really touching the chrysalis. And right over here, I'm going to try to put tape on just the fuzz. So this is what it looks like. And now I'm going to pin this with this pin into this enclosure. So I'm going to close that up. That's ready to go. So next, we'll be kind of checking out our caterpillars and, and our larger containers and seeing who needs what and going through and cleaning. So I have um, five right now. These two look very unwell to me. I don't like the position that that one's in. And I think they might have tea fly. I think this one and this one might have it. It's over here on the right, top right leaf. So he's got a lot of frass on his little container. And not on the plate. And he's up really high. So I'm gonna vacuum with him in there. I'm gonna put my hand here to block me so he doesn't fall. I'm going to put him way over here. It's nice and far away from what I'm doing over here. Alright. That's pretty close. He's still got three leaves and his plant is his milkweed's not wilting. So he's in no big rush. I don't see him. He's a recent transfer. That's him right here. Okay. So he's still very small. And so are his grass. Just give him a quick little vacuum. He's so far away, he'll be fine. Alright. And he's got his his milkweed looks great. So he's pretty good to go. Look who decided to close while we were getting busy there. Looks like a beautiful male drying out his wings. Well, I'm gonna let him have some peace and quiet. Let him be. I also feel like this guy has uh, plenty of milkweed. That's him right here. And there he is. He looks like he's doing really well. So I have three caterpillars. They look good. They look healthy. Got them cleaned up. So I have strong suspicions of tea fly for this caterpillar. He must be, I assume he's one I collected from outside. I'm honestly not so good at keeping track. But he's just like upside down and very limp with his antenna hanging down and hitting the ground. I'm honestly not sure what to do here. I don't know if I should euthanize or wait and watch. He is separated. So at least there's that. This is my other tea fly suspect. He is hanging upside down with limp uh, antenna. Well, I'll clean him up his little habitat and hope for the best. And then we're gonna check on the eggs. So these are actually from this afternoon, so. I'm just gonna check on them and not clean them. I'll clean them later today. Okay. 
everybody's looking clear color wise we have good color no one is hatched that's an old mark from somebody else so we'll just go ahead and replace the little moist towel for now and get it a fresh give them a fresh one I'm gonna clean this one out. Checking to see if anyone's hatched. Looks like no such luck. So I have a new container Oop, over here. I'm just gonna transfer them over and give them a close look each time. Alright, so I'm gonna wash this one. And I'm going to put a new napkin in here. And last but not least, we have our small end stars. I can tell already that some of them would like to be off on their own. We got this guy on the edge. I will give him his own holder since he is ready. And the other one, and I have three in here right now. There's number three. Now, unfortunately, I am out of my Tupperware, so I'm gonna have to go clean one. Cleaning your So, whatever's dishwasher, say if I pre rinse for the dishwasher, I don't bring anything in the house. Some, some clean supplies over there, but um, definitely need to get some more milkweed in there to feed everybody. So here we are at the tropical milkweed patch, and I have a lot going here. So I'm going to take some clippings. It's mixed in with uh, some California lilac. This lawn looks pretty good, basically I'm going to cut it a fair ways down and then chop it up into the tubes. Okay, let's go over and wash it. I already have some clean uh, floral tubes set aside. Fill those first. Now I'm going to look really close at my milkweed for um, pests or eggs or caterpillars. Remarkably, I don't really see much of anything on here, so I'm just going to give it a good rinse. And then we're going to chop it up into the various tubes. I'm going to cut at a really long angle. And I'm going to do a few little clip, little baby clips, just to get more areas for water to get in. And then I'm going to um, come up here. Four leaves is about how much I'm willing to give to one cat per day. But bonus pot on that one. So I'm going to do another cut angle here. Alright. So there's one. Now these two leaves are going to be in my way. So I'm going to snip those. And this will be for the little guys. And do a few little cuts here. Up this one. So this one's not. I don't know, I'm not sure if I'll give someone the whole thing or chop this up. But for now, I want to seal these leaves to give to my in stars one and two, and sometimes three. I've been liking the lighter method lately. So that's to prevent them from wilting. They still wilt pretty fast, but better than nothing. So I think I'm just going to go over with the two vials, or tubes, and then two leaves. And let's do a check-in on the male who recently closed. He's coming along beautifully. Still drying the wings. Hanging on to the empty chrysalis there. Alright, let's go ahead and put these, um, 
Let me start us one, two, and maybe three. Um, into a new dish now that I've got one clean for them. So we're gonna move these guys, except for one, into their new home. So we have some fresh leaves for them. So he's on this leaf. There's one caterpillar. This big guy, I'm going to move to his own container. He's right here. Okay. So now these two are by themselves. It's a pretty small nursery, actually. And I still have this guy right here. Put these away. Now I'm going to try to get him to go here and to here. He's being really good. He went straight on. Alright, so he's on there. Thank you so much for joining me today on Alive with Aaliyah as we checked out my routine um, taking care of the monarch butterflies. As you can see, caring for them throughout the various life stages, keeping them clean, keeping them fed is quite a bit of work and I'm dealing with really small numbers here. But it's rewarding, especially when you end up with beautiful monarchs like these to set forth into the wild to help restore the populations that have been hit so hard. Well, please be sure to click like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and want to see more. And as always, live in love with life.